Welcome to this Hunter Hunter Theory video. Please be warned this video contains spoilers for recent events in the manga. So the recent events of the manga are making every effort to humanize Crollo Lucifer and members of the Phantom Troop. Now this leads me to believe that eventually we are going to get some type of sympathizing and understanding from Karapaka of why the spiders killed the clan. Now there's a lot to unload from that statement. So let's throw it back to 2012 when Tagashi was serializing Karapaka's memories, the two chapter one shot in Weekly Shonen Jump. So basically, just to summarize this one shot, it's a story about Karapika wanting to leave the Karata clan's village. So they're living in the woods because they're persecuted by society, because as we know, when their eyes go scarlet, they become super strong and violent. However, a lot of the rules about them staying are logical and Karapika is very smart and he's always challenging the village elder saying he wants to leave, blah, blah, blah. So basically, um, Karapika and his best friend Pyro they find a chick like injured in this story and her name is Sheila. So basically Sheila, as we are now seeing, was a friend of Krolo's from back in the day. Very likely an original Phantom Troop member. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but I mean, it basically has. So basically she ended up in the Karata clan's village injured and she has a book of her called Dano Hunter. And it's a book about a great hunter and it inspires her to want to become an official hunter. And this is actually the same book that she has in the Krolo flashback. So basically, the Kurata clan can't speak English, so they have difficulty communicating with her. They're bringing her water, trying to decipher what she's saying through a dictionary. Eventually, her leg heals and she leaves a note saying that she hopes to meet them again in the outside world and that she'll be a pro hunter by the time that happens. The Karapaka was able to read her note, but he reckons that she left it because it was hard for her to say goodbye. Alright, back to the story. So basically, Karapaka keeps pestering the elder to let him leave the village. So the elder finally gives in and tells Karapaka, cool. There's three tests. If you pass all the tests, then you are free to leave the village. So Karapika passes the two written exams with flying colors. And then the third test is for him to venture out into the city and do some shopping. The only rule is, you know, your eyes can't turn scarlet. So Karapika is allowed to bring one person with him and he picks Pyro, his friend. So they go to this shopping center now to do the shopping. Like everything's kind of going cool, but Pyro's having some trouble with some strangers. Like they're knocking him over. Krapika gets upset. Some bystanders are kind of backing it for Pyro and Krapika. But basically, in the end, Krapika becomes too angry and his eyes go blazing scarlet and he starts punching up all the dudes that are mocking Pyro. And so this bit gets a little convoluted, but basically, the elder put these guys up to antagonizing Krapika to try and make his eyes scarlet. However, they was tipped off that it was going to be someone else other than Pyro with him. So it's all kind of messed up. But then like, like Pyro tells the guy to call the elder and, you know, they apologize and saying, oh, we thought it was going to be someone else with Krapakar and blah, blah, blah. Long story short, he ends up passing the test. Also, the bystanders turn nasty and start chucking stones at Krapakar and become scared that, you know, he's going to start beating them up now because, you know, they're known to go crazy with the red eyes and they get super strong and super violent. So they return to the village and the elder states that Karapika has now passed the test and has unlimited restrictions and is free to leave the village. Karapika waves goodbye to everyone, sets off and then six weeks, only six weeks later, he reads the news that the entire Karata clan has been massacred for their scarlet eyes. And at the scene, a message was left reading, we'll accept anything you leave here, but don't ever take anything away from us. And as we know, that is like the card that the Phantom Troop leave when they go and kill people for revenge and shit. So, the way Karapika's childhood relates to Krolo's childhood, Krolo was also kind of like confined in Meteor City. He couldn't leave, he was a kid. I wouldn't say Karapika is as charismatic as Krolo, however, they are both super smart. Like, ridiculously smart. Cunning, clever. Karapika passed those tests in like 5 minutes. He had like 90 minutes to do the written exams. He passed them in like 5 minutes. And now, the elephant in the room. Sheila. So the chick that arrived in the Karata clan forest and inspired Karapika to take that final step and also Loki inspired him to become a hunter, you know, leave the village and go become a hunter. Like she seems so good hearted. She even spoke about meeting up again in the future. So what's going on here, guys? Like, why was she there? Why did the clan get murdered for her eyes? Like, is Karapika going to come to find out that the woman he befriended is actually the cold blooded killer that massacred his clan? Is killing the clan something that Krolo really wanted to do? So when Karapika caught up with Krolo back in York New City, Karapika was ridiculously angry with him. You know, he stopped his nen. Like, he wanted to do more with him, but obviously his soulka managed to, like, get him back. 
also they keep emphasizing in Karapika's flashback one shot that the outside people are evil like they're bad like you don't want to leave the village blah 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 and you know obviously Karapika had good faith in them but he's seen like I feel like this is some type of a redemption arc for Karapika like he may come to find out that Krolo didn't really want to kill the spiders like that but the reason why he had to perhaps is something that Karapika will be able to sympathize with Either way, I'm super happy that we're getting this insight into Krolo and the Phantom Troop. This is something that Tagashi has wanted to express to us for over 20 years now. Chapter 102 of Hunter x Hunter was serialized November 27th, 2000. So yeah, 22 years ago, guys. And in that chapter, he actually started a flashback with the Phantom Troop. Even had the Phantom Troop members holding a videotape in Meteor City. So it's obviously something he wanted to expand upon at the time. However, uh, after this Karapika one-shot got released in volume form in 2013, there was an interview with Tagashi included in the volume. The interviewer asks, when and how did you come up with Karapika's past events that was recently released? Tagashi says, when I was writing and drawing the Phantom Troop arc, speaking in terms of what volume, it was around volume 10. How many years ago was that? It's been about 10 years now. I can only remember in terms of decades since it's all a bit hazy now. Things have been getting very tiring lately, so I don't remember too well. Why and how I started was because this was a time when I didn't think things would become so tiring, so I thought I would immediately be able to put it onto paper. So I wanted to draw out the relationship and conflict between the Phantom Troop and Karapika, starting from the origins. I thought I would be able to finish it quickly, and I was able to finish Karapika's quickly, but shortly after, a lot happened and I ended up having to shelve it. So as we know, Tagashi has chronic back pains, uh, really terrible back problems, which has stopped him from writing Hunter on a regular basis. And, you know, hiatus, ex hiatus, like, bro, like 20 years ago. So it's interesting hearing in retrospect that he wanted to flesh out the York New City even more because we kind of got the story from Karapika's side about him wanting revenge for his clan being killed. But we ain't really get the spider's side of events. In the interview, Tagashi goes on to say that Krolo is his favorite character because he is a man that didn't nominate himself to become the leader of the Phantom Troop. Instead, he was nominated by others and happily took on the request to become their leader. He says, I think people who can do their best in a situation like that is amazing. So yeah, going by this interview in 2013, it's clear that Tagashi had bigger plans for Krolo and the Phantom Troop all the way back in 2000. Like, But yeah, in retrospect, it's really interesting reading this interview because obviously Tagashi had big plans for Krolo and the Phantom Troop back in the York New City arc but you know because of issues of health and this and that he was unable to get as deep as he wanted to however it's clearly something that he wanted to do he clearly speaks of Krolo in such a high light so I'm just happy for the guy to be able to be writing this 20 years later now with Hunter it's very uncertain his future is always very uncertain so it's just nice that he's getting to write this of what he wanted to write and you know, I'm hoping and praying that he keeps going and we just keep getting as much Hunter as humanly possible. Uh, the interviewer also asked Tagashi what will end up happening to Karapaka and the Phantom Troop. Tagashi replies, they will all die. Now, he may be trolling low-key with an answer like this, you know, like they may, they're all going to die eventually, you know, through old age and shit. But of course, in recent events of the manga, we've seen his soul car uh, aiming to take out all of the Phantom Troop one by one. The interviewer also asked Tagashi about movies. Tagashi says like horror is his favorite type of genre and not so much horror but more so situations where people die off one by one. He says his all-time favorite movie is Alien because again the limited space and people dying off one by one. So again that is very telling of the current arc. The succession war on the ship en route to the dark continent. His soul cut is on the loose wanting to kill off the spiders one by one. We've already seen him take out two of them. So yeah, if slash when we ever get there, I'm ready to see his soul picking off some more spider members on some creepy shit like Alien just like creeping up behind them, bungee gum and yo. So yeah, we always knew that Karapaka and Krola was heavily connected because of the Phantom Troop killing the Karata clan and whatnot. But yeah, Sheila being in this flashback just ties this thing all together so much more and also don't forget that the phantom troop has zodic members in the family and also zodic members uh, originated from meet your city as well like kilo as mom so it's messy hunt is so good you have the mafia you have the phantom troop you have the zodics you have karapika's clan 
they're all linked up like oh man this story's so fucking good this is such a shame that we don't get it as regular as other stories anyways i'm happy to gash is being able to write this i wish him all the best health and recovery asap i've been a gary sweeaboo thank you so much for watching this video please like and subscribe for more and i'll catch you guys soon peace